Right, so I'm out in my basement lab. I've been working on getting the burning iron demonstration. A couple weeks ago, I set myself this challenge to try to make a better burning iron demo. The burning iron demo is where you burn a little bit of steel wool and it gains mass, which is kind of counterintuitive. Like in this case, we started with 59 milligrams of iron and ended up with 63 milligrams of product. That's very different from what we see with like a birthday candle, which mostly burns away. I want to make a 2D propagating reaction where iron is restricted to a thin plane and the reaction spreads out across it. Now I've got an electronic igniter that I'm working on, it's not done. I've got a bunch of good suggestions on how I might increase the reaction rate to compensate for the limited volume because if you're restricting it to 2D, you tend to get less reactivity, especially if it's sandwiched between glass plates. That was a bad idea. I tried that, tried to add some oxidizer, didn't work. What seems to have been working was a suggestion from some viewers who said, try hydrogen peroxide. And other folks said, try flowing gaseous oxygen across your iron while it's burning. I don't want to submerge the reaction in hydrogen peroxide because if it's concentrated enough to work, it will be dangerous. And if it's not concentrated enough, then I will quench the reaction in the water. On the other hand, I don't wanna buy a gas cylinder full of oxygen. I actually have a gas cylinder. This is my carbon dioxide cylinder. And I regret buying this. You see, it's supposed to be cheaper if you buy one of these instead of a whole bunch of a bunch of uh, soda stream canisters, but if you end up wasting most of it because it leaks, then it's not cheaper. It's like buying uh, in bulk at Costco's because it's 30% cheaper, but then you throw 90% of it away. Okay, I digress. Point being, I made gaseous oxygen by decomposing hydrogen peroxide, and I ran the reaction that it worked actually remarkably well. So how do we actually decompose hydrogen peroxide into oxygen? Well, we're going to need some liver. Chop that up into fine pieces and then press it through a sieve. Now, I've heard that you can use dry yeast to decompose it, so let's compare the two. Chopped liver versus yeast. Here's chopped liver into a bag of hydrogen peroxide. Immediately foam begins to build up and you get a gas output. A quarter cup of 3% hydrogen peroxide gives you almost a gallon bag of oxygen. Compare that to adding the yeast, and yeah, you can see some bubbles if you wait long enough, but there's no comparison. Beef liver has a lot of catalase. So armed with that knowledge, I filled this heavy-bottomed steel pot with a quarter cup of hydrogen peroxide, and then added the beef liver and this little homemade baling wire trivet. Then I put the steel wool in, and ignited it. The oxygen from the decomposing hydrogen peroxide accelerated the reaction quite a bit, and I got even these flashes of brilliant light that I'd never seen before in pure air. Really interesting acceleration of the reaction, so I'm pretty sure that this is gonna work for us. So next time we're gonna try it without all of the water and liver floating around at the bottom and the foam. Instead, I'll purge the pot with gaseous oxygen and run it there and restrict the steel wool to 2D by wrapping it around some glass or some other clever trick to try to get it into a very thin mat. And we'll see how that works. So tune in next time. Uh, last time I did a little video essay about robots, so check that out. And next time, if not iron burning, then I will probably do a video essay about diamonds. So if you're interested in that, please tune in and we will see you next time.